if given the state of affairs in general, you uh, looking at the caliber and quality of men, if ultimately being with a man is in any way, sense or form a compromise on yourself, right? But it sounds like from what I'm hearing, any situation that requires you to tone down who and what you are in itself is not something that you're willing to go into. So that question is pretty much answered. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, to that point, because it, not everything is black and white and we don't reach a final destination destination without deviations and questions and doubts. Um, I have a situation, I've been in situations where I've had to interrogate myself and find myself. And I want to say that it is not a bad thing because you're testing the waters, you're giving your best, you're looking at the reactions, you are researching. There's nothing wrong with that. But ultimately, at the end of it or at the next level, if you continue with this person, are you in essence still truth to yourself? And it's a very hard thing sharing relationship things with friends, for me personally. Um, with those I trust, I'll go into as much detail as I can. But there are some things where I'm like, I'm still interrogating this. I don't have the words for it. And to have friends who give me that space is precious. And I appreciate that. But it's not, a, 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 you know, it's not cut and dried. It's not this is how it is and it's going to be like that. You find that even you become changed for the better. You've learned something new about yourself. And that's absolutely okay. It's a journey we're on. We're not at final destinations at every turn. Okay, so that's something that needs to be said, especially for people in their 20s, if I can be so brave as to say that, because it's my experience. We don't need to know everything about ourselves at the word go. We need these experiences to explore who we really are. It's a journey. Sorry, just to add to that, you don't know what you don't know, right? And that's why people, and that's why people go, oh, this person, like, don't be with that person now. Like, I've, she's, you know, they're good for each other. Or whatever, because sometimes you actually realize when you go through a journey, like she's saying, and you never knew you needed that. You didn't know you actually needed that. And you're, you're probably at your best self, but you didn't know that. Yeah. So ultimately, you, like you're saying, you're researching, you're figuring it all out. You're not the same when you were 20 like you are now. It's all part of the journey. So I think most important is embrace it. Like be willing to go through the journey. And one question I would ask in light of uh, your own journeys and what you've seen in the workspace in a personal context, what is the thing that scares you the most about the current state of black masculinity? So, so for me, it's f what scares me the most is fearing embracing it. Like embrace, be willing to go through the tough realization or going through the tough times or going through, because I don't think this whole thing of the masculinity, you know, of like the ma men don't cry or whatever it is that you've been taught or you know of, don't be afraid of actually just going into that space and truly realizing. Because I feel, for me, or what I've experienced, is that a lot is hidden and a lot is just kept and bottled up. And you actually, it's almost like you're not living your truth or, or truly experiencing life as it should be because you're, you're in this cocoon or in this, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And it's just the sad bit for me is like normalize men crying normalize it's okay to you know be i am afraid of this normalize it it's it's okay i think as women we probably share a lot more because we i gain strength from understanding and going through the experiences these women went through and then i can go oh my gosh that's a, a hectic lesson that i can learn as much as it didn't happen to me i don't think men do that yeah. like in the guise of masculinity i don't i don't actually think men have genuine conversations about guys i'm in going through some serious stuff, mentally, emotionally, whatever it may be. And it's just like normalize that stuff. And, and for me, it's just like the more you normalize it, the more you truly can experience life and actually truly become a better version of yourself and stop doing and being. Mm. Why are you... S oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Why are you talking about normalizing men crying? Why... Are men not allowed to cry? Because that's what they've been taught 
since they were like as she was saying like they realized like oh my gosh a girl is beating me why is that a problem we're all running and we're kids doesn't matter i'm four i'm five whatever it is like why isn't that okay for a girl to beat me why isn't it okay for the girl to be stronger and she can lift that better than i can it's okay it shouldn't it it is okay i i think it's okay because i also don't think because guess what they're not all the same not all men are buff then they're not all bodybuilders they're not all so is the weak one well i don't know you team deem that one weak because they're not buff is that okay that's also not okay you say that because it's like no boys don't cry like you treat children differently you know if if kids were playing here and a boy comes and he's crying you're going to tell him to man up what's his problem but the girl you'd be like oh my darling it's going to be okay girl it's going to why is it not going to be okay for the boy it will be and it's okay because then they grow up to be boys who like i cannot show emotion but i'm hurting and guess what that affects how they how they socialize with other people how they're going to interact with other women it all affects it and it's because as a young kid you were told you got cry you're a man you can't do it but they can and it's okay guys it's not a sign of weakness it's because i'm acknowledging the pain as long as you understand why you're crying i think for me is more important I must understand that okay I'm in this feeling it's a it's a emotion mm-hmm. I must understand that I'm going through this but guess what it will be over and we move on mm. So I guess that's that's just my view of it Yeah people should realize that we're all human we have feelings and we can act we can feel them how we act on them is how we socialize basically You just maybe think of a story <laughs> She just maybe remember an experience from my 20s uh, living at home still with my grandparents and there was a guy who was actively you know chasing me but he was short tiny and um not uh, not very good looking and my grandmother made a comment what does he think he's going to do how will he protect you from a lion he's so tiny and i was like okay i know my grandmother is trying to make a point of what can he offer you but you know the thing of how will he protect you from a lion first of all we don't live anywhere near rural kruger national park type of place we're in the city in cape town but i've never forgotten that because um you know trying to answer your question what am i what are we afraid of that's not going to change it's it's the constructs around what a man should be what a woman should be and how we should interact with each other and how a man should be this strong person and a female should submit blah 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 it's 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 not changing that mindset that's what i fear the most i'm not afraid of a lot of things in life that's why i like trying things even in relationships even with work that you know a position i've never tried i'm not afraid of things but i am afraid of things not changing for the better or for something new just change try things so for our generation i mean the way things have changed between the 80s and now um we are in constant flux but i think it's a good thing we just need to make time to see what should go what can stay what we can improve on and one of the things is these constructs not changing them is just not going to benefit anyone just thinking of her the, the the colleague who shouted at her because she was not respectful like what's that got to do with anything in the bigger scheme of things in economics in in us working together you know pushing each other to be greater than what we are today we're not we're not going to get far if we don't change those mindsets yeah absolutely um so as black people we come from this society where you can't show weakness at any given time mm-hmm. you can't be vulnerable at any given time like i'll use mental health as an example where mm-hmm. if you yeah. speak out about your mental health issues men in particular everyone in the room will lose respect for you every man in the room will lose respect for you because then it's a sh- sign of you're weak mm-hmm. you're vulnerable you're not a man you know so it's and, and it's been like that for generations and i don't know how many generations it will take to to undo that but mm-hmm. so me my fear is that if i show vulnerability and i've said this to ndombi before is people will lose respect for me and treat me a certain way and i think that's the same thing with me and that's mm-hmm. why they don't cry <laughs> is because they know that the minute they cry all the men in the pub will look at him differently and treat him differently and call him female private part names just because he was vulnerable yeah Whew. um what do i fear the most 
I feel projection from the men in our lives. And what I mean by that, I mean the men we have grew up seeing. So I was raised, as I mentioned earlier, by matriarchs, meaning I was raised by a single mom. However, I had my uncles. And I say uncles, plural, because it was my uncle, my mom's brother, alongside with um, his friends, who all assume they perform a fatherly role in your life. However, what that then does is they have a certain perception about certain things, um, how you should go about certain things, the career you should pick, the degree you should study, how you should not play sports because there's no point. Um, and you, 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 you grow up with all of this and you constantly are fighting this battle until one day the penny drops and you're like, hold on. I am Dombia Temba Nobukosi Mwababa as an individual. Yes, I am also needs to so and so and so and so and so and so. And mind you, they are all very respected men in their own right in society. So I don't know of a girl who ever wants to let her daddy down. And for me, daddies come in the form of uncles. And there are a lot of them. And they all at my age, believe they know better than I do for myself. I am partly to blame because I do indulge and I do allow certain things which perhaps I shouldn't have. But my major bone of contention with them is on the matter of relationships. They feel a certain way about certain tribes, certain races, and their expectation is that you marry into a certain tribe or a certain race because they believe that is the way. I've even been told, if you marry said men from such and such a tribe or said men from such and such a race, I'm not taking their cows. I was bold enough, not, and it's not long ago, to be like, it's okay, I can go for free. They were not expecting that. They were completely blindsided. They didn't look at me as they would have had I said that in my 20s even, where they, I would have been reprimanded and very quickly put back into whatever mold that I must be compliant in the area of relationships. Um, but because I always grew up, much as I was raised up by matriarchs, I, was, I had the sense that I must please the men in my life. And when I'm saying men, I'm not talking about the men I date, I'm talking about the men I look up to, the men who have raised me. And it's just that one thing, and ironically, everybody they do not want me to be with are the only ones who have hit on me, right? So it, it, it comes to a point where I hear them, but do I then take a stand, the man I love versus the men I love? Who have, because we all see when a woman gets married, she's walked down the aisle by her father, in my sense, there's constantly a battle of who's, I was like, okay, I can have maximum of, two, I've got two hands. But if you want us to create, two can walk in front, two behind, two, you know, I would love that. But if for any reason they have decided, no, they do not approve of that choice that I have made, do I then walk myself down the aisle? Because I will not, I'm at a point where I'm strong enough to be like, no, this is the man I love and this is the man I have chosen and I've taken everything into account, how you have raised me and whatever. And I have always been a good kid. This is one thing I've also even said to them and to my aunts equally, that I understand and I hear you, but all of you that are in your respective marriages and relationships, did everybody necessarily approve? And because there was that disapproval, while within you had this yearning for the approval, did you then go with the choice of your parents or did you stick with your own decision? Why then would you expect differently of me or differently from me? So it's that projection that is my biggest fear that, okay, and it's not just impacting on me. I have a very aware child. So she is very well aware that, oh, okulu, okulu, um, grand, my granddad's have this perception and it's at that case so does mom go with what she wants or does she go with what okulu want and does necessarily what you as the paternal figure in my life 
because you do want the best for your kids. But please don't project. Don't say because I believe this. And this is why one of the most solid relationships I have is with my grandmother. I always joke and say I could walk up and tell my grandmother I'm a pole dancer. She will not love me any less. She's like, I'm whatever makes you happy. Of course, I'm not going to go and do that. But it's just one of those things where you know. And that is my desire for the men in our lives who have shaped us and formed us to the women we are today. Can you also just let me be and trust whatever process I've gone through in coming to the decision I've come to, whether you approve it or not, can you just be there? Because do not put me in a situation where my, I must now choose between the man I love and between you. You're not going to win. I can say that categorically now. I may not have been able to say this five, ten years ago. But it's been a journey and an evolution and a process to where I've gotten to that point where I'm like, but they will say certain things. Like others will even go so far and tell you, but you know, fine. But which basically means we will bury you at home, implying that you will go out there and make that decision that we've told you not to make. But when you die, we are burying you at home because you are no longer with this man that you were so. So for me, that is for personally, that projection is my biggest fear. Thank you so much for your time, your truths. Um, speaking them so openly and honestly and helping us to take this conversation forward and ultimately hoping that we continue these conversations not just on this show but in our personal spaces to ultimately help us all become better versions of ourselves and ultimately then obviously shape a better society than the one that we're in today. Thank you. <laughs>